Throughout our epistle, we learn that sin divides. As we probably look at our own lives, we can realize, well, yeah, that's kind of an obvious thing. But it's worth pondering in the, through the eyes of Scripture today. God created us to be together with one another, so sin is that which works to separate us, to divide us, isolate it ends friendships, destroys marriages, separates families, hurts congregations. Ultimately, it works so hard because it wants to send sinners to, into the grave and to hell, the greatest isolation of them all. Our epistle is full of that language of division, the division brought about by sin. It speaks of the division between the circumcised and the uncircumcised, between the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of the promise. It distinguishes between those who are far off from God and those who have been brought near to Him in Christ. It speaks of the divisions from hostility and peace between strangers and aliens versus fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. All of these division words and phrases mark for us a sad truth, that not all are believers in Jesus. It shows that there are the believers and the unbelievers. There is salvation and there is damnation. There is the light of Christ and then there's the outer darkness. In the light, there are songs of praise to God. And there's, in the darkness, there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is heaven and there is hell. Truly, sin divides. St. Paul notes this division in order to lead us to a miraculous truth. That Jesus Christ has come to end the division. To restore communion between man and God. What Paul writes to the Ephesians is also true for you and me. That once we were separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of God's people and strangers to the covenant of promise. In other words, you were born sinful, separated, divided from God and His grace for you. And therefore, you were without hope. Because of sin, you were destined to be divided from God in hell for an eternity. But that's not who God is. That's not what He desires. He does not desire the death, the eternal punishment of anyone. He wants all to come to the knowledge of the truth and to be saved. And that's why Jesus came. Because man was divided from God's presence by the fall of Adam into sin, so the Son of God became man, became the new Adam to come and save us. As God and man, he was able to straddle that dividing wall, if you will. As God and man, he went to the cross to shed his blood to bring you near to God once again. So he takes us from out of darkness and sets us into the light of God, into the glory of heaven. Jesus takes our sins to the cross as he brings us over that threshold. He suffers God's judgment that would have left you divided in hell for eternity. Risen again, he now calls you to faith by sending his Holy Spirit to enliven your hearts, your minds, bodies, souls, to live united to Him. In baptism, Christ has put His name on you, marked you as His own. Even as our baptismal rite declares, receive upon your forehead and upon your heart the mark of the cross to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. You have been joined into his death and resurrection. He's joined you to himself, joined you to the beloved Holy Trinity. 
That is amazing unity for you. Paul says, once you were separated from the commonwealth of Israel. In other words, you were outside of where God is. Outside of the church, the body of believers. But by his own blood, Jesus has brought you in to be united to God and to one another. That's amazing fellowship that we share in. Paul says, once you were far off, you were away from where God is. Now you've been brought near into God's presence by the blood of Jesus. Once you had no one to turn to, no one to pray to who would listen, now through Christ you have access to your heavenly Father who promises to hear your prayers and to answer them. Once you were sin divided from God, but now you are Christ united with him because of Jesus' sacrifice for you. And this isn't any mystery to us because the apostles and the prophets have made it clear. It's not your efforts or character or desires. It's all the Lord's doing to save you. Jesus has died for you. Jesus is risen for you. Jesus now builds you into his church by means of his word. That amazing grace that flows forth from his pastors, from his scriptures today. This is what it, our text means when it says that you are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. For the Lord uses or has used the apostles and the prophets to record his holy word. His word that points you. To Christ points you to your Savior on whom the church is now built and because you are in Christ you are forgiven you are shaped into a living stone that becomes the holy temple of God built together for a dwelling place by the Holy Spirit this is what empowers us to live God-pleasing lives as his blood-bought children. It allows his love to rub off on other people. Remember that we live in this sin-divided world. As we gather here as God's family, we're given rest from those struggles. We're given relief knowing that here we are in God's presence. Here is where the peace that surpasses all understanding is given out. But the world doesn't know that. The world forsakes that. You have heard the gospel today. You have heard how you are united in Christ. But so many others are not so fortunate, not so blessed. Some have forgotten the joy of Jesus. Many more have never heard. The seed has never been able to take root in their hearts or it withers under the trials and troubles of this world. That leads us into one of the great blessings that our congregation has into our Stephen ministry program that was put in place about five years ago to bring the unity of Christ into a sin-divided world. What kinds of divisions have our ministers faced over the past few years? Well, generally there's a, a couple of categories, very specific needs within each of those, but the first general category is dealing with death. Death of a loved one. A spouse, a parent, the usual scenarios. Death is that ultimate division that sin causes. And when we're weighed down with grief, it can be hard to remember the joy of our unity with Christ. We're trying to cope to learn, or trying to deal with the, the new normal. Life without this other special person. And sometimes, again, because of that grief, maybe carrying a burden of things that you wish you would have said, wish you would have done. 
It can be hard to hope. It can be hard to deal with those things. And we can lose our focus on Christ. Another general category, it's similar, but dealing with those who are low in spirit. Not low because of death, but low because of other circumstances, other changes, other transitions going on in life. Maybe it's a sickness. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's that diagnosis that, oh man, I never saw this coming. Maybe it's the repercussions of bad choices that you've made in your own life. And you wonder, man, where's God? Can he truly love me? Can he truly help me? Those dealing with depression, still, again, others just struggling to adjust because of maybe having to give up their lifetime home in order to have to go to, to assisted living or nursing home. Our Stephen Ministry program is there to help those that are caught in the turmoil of life and just need a helping hand, a shoulder to lean on, maybe to cry on, to help with the baby steps that it takes to get to that place where Christ is known and seen and loved. Sometimes, though, it is hard to hear the gospel. Hard to believe that God is near. Hard to know that God still loves you. And so I'm so blessed to have the Stephen ministers as my partners in the gospel. A minister can come and meet you in those low places with confidence and in confidentiality to help you walk through the valley of the shadow of death to a place where you can find that joy, that hope that is ours in Christ. And there are those that I do provide that care for personally, but I'm so very thankful for our Stephen leaders and ministers who have helped so many people over these past years. Someone who is just there to pray for those that they're visiting with to pray with them when the words just can't be found someone who's there just to listen just to be there someone that you can trust with what's on your heart and your mind and in doing so our Stephen ministers bring Jesus bringing unity to this sin-divided world. And in bringing Jesus, faith is kindled and hope arises. It's grounded in the good, good news that Paul shared with all the churches that he went to and the church of Ephesus that we heard his words from today. And we hear again the good news that once you were far off, but now you have been brought near. Not just because of unbelief, but because of sin and its brokenness in this world. We find ourselves in like going in and out like the tides with our faith life. Some days we seems like God is so good and so near, and other days that like God is so far away. But know that Christ's ministry is to bring you near and to keep you close. Once you were aliens, you were foreigners to God, but now you are citizens of heaven in Christ. Once you were strangers to God, but now in Christ you are members of his holy family. You are in the household of God. Once you had no hope, but in Christ you have perfect hope. You have eternal life. Once you were an enemy of God, divided from him because of sin. But in Christ, you are forgiven. And you are God's beloved child and an heir of paradise. Once we were lost, but now we are found. In Christ, you are forgiven and have eternal life. Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.